Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn how to find the area and perimeter of polygons in the coordinate plane. We're going to do that using this foldable. It looks like this and then your other page should look like that. First of all, let's start off with some vocab we need to know. Okay, if I ever go too fast on the vocab, just pause the video, continue copying it down, and then unpause it and keep following along. A vertex is a point where the sides of a polygon meet, or it makes up the corners of a specific shape. So right here, we have a four-sided figure, otherwise known as a parallelogram. Look at those four corners. Each of those corners is called a vertex. The vertexes are made up of ordered pairs or coordinate points. Okay, the little x comma y. Okay, each of those are used to name a vertex. I just broke a number one rule. You're never supposed to use a definition within a definition. So let's define what a polygon is. A polygon is a closed figure formed by three or more straight line segments that meet at their endpoints. So if we take a look at some examples right here, that is a rectangle, triangle, pentagon, octagon, and uh, man, what is this? It's a star, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen sided figure. So hence, after 12, they stop coming up with specific names. It's just a 16 dash gone, 16 gone. Why did I take the time in this video to count the sides? Because that's the definition of a polygon. It's an enclosed figure. Notice how this is an enclosed space. And I can actually count the number of sides. None of the lines are curved. Unlike things that aren't polygons. Right here, a circle, it's known for never stopping, you know, never ending. So where does it stop? Start, how do I count the number of sides? You can't, so it's not a polygon. This, do I stop here? Is this just considered one side? Again, it's made up of straight line segments, so this is not a polygon because how, how do I determine where it stops and where it starts? This is not a singular enclosed space, so this is also not a polygon. And then finally, we have is this trying to be a triangle? Did it fail? Okay, they have to actually commit to meeting at their endpoints. Okay, this one just did not follow through. Okay, because it's not a fully enclosed space, it failed miserably at becoming a triangle, hence it's not a polygon. Okay, whenever you can't count the number of sides because it's either curved or it's not one singular enclosed space, so am I supposed to count this as one, two sides, or just one side, or if it doesn't meet all the way, okay? Those are not polygons. These are polygons. Now that we've established the difference between what makes a polygon a polygon, let's actually graph some to find the area and perimeter of them. This first one, it gave me the vertexes A, B, C, and D. So that's one, two, three, four different vertexes. So let's go ahead and graph them. And remember, whenever you're given a coordinate point, the first one is the X. Think of it as the horizontal one, just like a number line. And if it's positive, you go to the right. If it's negative, just like a number line, you go to the left. The second number in a coordinate point is the Y value. It makes up the vertical axis. If it's positive, it makes sense that you go up. Negative, go down. So this very first point is negative 1, 3. So I'm going to start at my origin, and I'm going to go 1 to the left, and then positive 3. So up, 1, 2, 3. That is point A. Go back to your origin. For B, it's positive 6, so right 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and positive 3. So up 3, 1, 2, 3. There's point B. C is right six, so you can count it off, or you went six to the right for B, and then down because it's negative two, one, two. There's point C. D, go back to your origin, negative one, so left one, and negative two, so down two. There's point D. Now that you have your four corners or four vertexes, go ahead and connect them. And now you have your polygon, which in this instance is a parallelogram or more specifically a rectangle. It's asking me to find the perimeter. Before I can find the perimeter, I need to know the lengths 
from A to B? What is that distance? Okay, remember when you start counting a distance, you actually don't start counting until you physically move. So right here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that has a length of seven. And perimeter is all the outside ledges. So I need to find from B to C. That's one, two, three, four, five. If you remember about a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel and equal. So this is seven, so is this. If you didn't remember that, okay, just go ahead and count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so then what should this side be? If you said five, that's right, because this side is five, so is this, or you could have just counted. Okay, now that we have all of our outside edges, we're gonna go ahead and find the perimeter. So my first edge is seven, and then from P to C is five, from C to D is seven, and from A to D is five. Go ahead and add all that together. Seven plus five is 12. The other seven plus five, also 12. And when you add those together, you get 24. Notice how I said units and not units squared. When you're asked to find the perimeter, you just use singular units. So if they said each box indicates an inch or a foot, it would just be 24 inches or 24 feet. If they don't particularly tell you what the specific unit is, just use the word units. A lot of you are freaking out right now because you did two times length plus two times width. So you did two times seven plus two times five and you didn't follow this and you're freaking out that you did it wrong. Two times seven is 14. Two times five is 10. What is 14 plus 10? Also 24. So as long as you got 24 units, great, good job, you did it. Okay, I just did it the baby easy way of going around the outside edges because two times length plus two times width only works for the perimeter of a rectangle. And so if we have different shapes, then that formula doesn't work and one less formula I have to memorize. But if you did it the other way of two times length plus two times width and got 24, good job, okay? But here's an example of one that is no longer a rectangle because this has one, two, three, four, five, six vertexes, which means it's not gonna be a quadrilateral shape. It's gonna be six sides as a hexagon. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this hexagon. My first point is one, five. So go to your origin, write one, up, one, two, three, four, five. There's my first point, M. N is four, nine. So back to your origin, go write one, two, three, four, and up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's point N. For point P, you guessed it, back to your origin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Notice how N also had a distance going up of nine, so these should be directly across from each other. It's like a built in check, so that's nice. Okay. For Q, you could count all the way over to 12, or if you know that this one over nine, just continue from there, 10, 11, 12, and then up one, two, three, four, five. There's Q. For R, let's drop down from P, because we know it went over nine, and then up one. Okay, or again, you could have started from the origin, counted over nine, up one. And then finally for S, Go over to the right, one, two, three, four, and up one. That's point S. Now that you have all six vertexes, go ahead and connect them to make your hexagon. It's asking me to find the perimeter, so all the outside edges. So let's go ahead and count the distance from N to P. It's one, two, three, four, five. Since this is parallel to this one, I know that that is five as well, okay? And then we don't actually know how to find the distance from diagonal lines unless you do the Pythagorean theorem and that is much, much later. However, it told me this piece of information right here, regular polygon. Whenever we have a regular polygon, we know that 
all side lengths are equal. So that means if this is five, all my side lengths are five. So to find the perimeter, add all your outside edges. You have a five plus this five plus this five plus this five plus that five, and then finally plus your last five. Okay, add all those together. Five and five make 10. That five and five make 10. And this five and five make 10. Add all that together. Well, 10 plus 10 plus 10, you get 30. And it's 30 units. Remember, perimeter is units, not units squared. A lot of you noticed that there are six fives. If you did six times five and got 30, great job. Okay, good job on seeing that pattern. Okay, what we mainly care about is that you got, there were six fives, whether you wrote them all out or you did six times five, and then you got an answer of 30 units. That's what we care about. Good job. Okay, I think we've mastered perimeter. Let's move on to area. This has one, two, three, four vertexes. So it's probably going to make a quadrilateral of some kind. Let's see. I'm going to start at my origin. My first point is J, negative three, two. So I'm going to go left three, one, two, three, and up two, one, two. There's point J. My next point is four, two. So I'm going to go from my origin, one, two, three, four to the right, and up one, two. There's point K. Next point is L, two, negative five. So right two and down one, two, three, four, five. Okay, finally we have M, which is negative five, so left five, one, two, three, four, five, and down five, one, two, three, four, five. You have all four of your vertexes, so go ahead and connect them to draw your shape. And this is not a rectangle, so I can't find the distances of these, which is great that it's not asking me to find the perimeter because I wouldn't be able to know the distance of this. So instead, it asked me to find the area, which I can do because area has a formula of base times height. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the distance or the length of the base and the height, the straight up and down vertical distance. So let's count from M to L. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My base has a length of seven. Let's count my height. Okay, so straight down, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Please always take the time to count it. This was just a random coincidence that the base and height happened to be the same. That is not always the case. Okay, so now I know my base length of seven and I counted my vertical height of seven. Let's go ahead and plug those in, okay? And it's important that I actually write A equals because later on, they're gonna give us different parts of the equation. So please plug in what you know, okay? So seven is my base and my height is also seven. Now simplify that, seven times seven is 49. And notice that this time it's not units, it's units squared because we were asked to find the area. It's seven units times seven units, units times units will be units squared. All right, congratulations, you found your first area. We have one more example with an area. Okay, let's take a look. This time there's one, two, three vertices, so it's probably gonna make a triangle. Good job if you said triangle. Okay, my first point is three, four. So from my origin, I'm gonna go right, one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four. There's point X. From my origin, I'm gonna go right five, one, two, three, four, five, and down five, one, two, three, four, five. There's point Y. Z is negative three, negative five. So negative three, one, two, three to the left, and down five, one, two, three, four, five. There's point Z. Go ahead and connect those three vertices and you have your polygon of a triangle. Again, it's asking me not for the perimeter this time, but the area. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. Some of you may have learned it as one half base times height, 
multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. So that's just a matter of preference, however you wanna do that. Let's go ahead and find my base length. Okay, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for my base. And my height, if I drop straight down from the top of vertex all the way down to my base shape, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it has a height of nine. Plug that in. Okay, again, bring down your area. Later on, this will be helpful. Okay, your base is eight and your height is nine. And then go ahead and put that over two. Now I'm gonna stop for a little second right here because you could go eight times nine is 72 and then 72 divided by two is 36. But in case I'm not allowed a calculator, I like to cross cancel. So I know that two can go into both eight and two. Two divided by two is one, eight divided by two is four. And now I have much smaller numbers. Four times nine is 36. And then I'm gonna put that over one and 36 over one is just 36. So you should have a final answer of an area of 36 units squared. Congratulations. You graphed polygons in the coordinate plane, and then you found the distance of their side lengths in order to calculate the area or perimeter of each individual polygon. You guys have mastered yet another standard. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you.